Welcome back to the channel guys. Uh, we've got uh, a big update I would say. I would say it's a big update for uh, the K20. So uh, I've got it in the garage today and we are going to make an inlet manifold. So uh, we're going to start with that which involves a lot of messy work. There's going to be a lot of dodgy stuff you're going to see here. A lot of uh, non-proper tool substitute sort of uh, working it out but if it works, it works. But anyway, eh, uh, I'd like to introduce my new tool. Look at this bad boy. Wee oh. half inch breaker bar. It's a bit of a daddy. And uh, that was for the Peugeot in the last video, if you've seen that. Uh, the field bolts, which I didn't actually come, but I didn't need it to be fair to end up with. But yeah. So basically, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to push this thing outside. I'm going to clean up the bench a little bit. There's a bit of uh, aluminium. It's another video. And here's another bit of aluminium. And this, believe it or not, is going to be my inlet manifold. As you can see, there's the inlets there. Uh, off the stock EP3 one, what I've done, I've just cut this off. I think I maybe showed you that in a different video. Uh, and yeah, so I've got a bit of play here. I've just drawn on some sort of portholes here, uh, just rough estimates. And the idea is if I cut out them holes, this will fit on here, which will act as like a backing plate. Um, once that's all tigged onto the manifold, I'm then going to clean it up a little bit. Uh, and uh, yeah start on the next stage but as you can see these holes are roughly drilled out and what i'm actually going to do and this is the rough but i was on about is i'm going to have to drill right the way around here in ovals millions of holes chap it out and uh see if i've got i did buy a little where's my wee bar box bar box aha a carbide bit for aluminium it's not like steel. Steel ones clog up really quick. Uh, so this is one dedicated for aluminium, which will help me bore that out a bit. So there we go. Note to self, I could really do what pillars are like. I can't think of anything I can make one out of, so I'll just have to keep on going with the old drill. Uh, but yeah, we'll get there. Just sort of uh, keep on going with the old uh, holes round. Uh, these are just rough just now. This is the rough part of the build. Uh, when I get it on there, I'll be able to machine it out. Machine it. <laughs> Use my CNC. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, once we bore it out, I'll be there to do fine adjustments. Uh, and I don't mind about a little bit of a gap around outside because when I chamfer it and weld it, uh, it'll be uh, a better weld uh, when you get around more penetration on both sides. Um, and then that way it'll be sort of be able to port it and still have plenty of meat to weld onto. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I'm going to carry on with my holes. Holes? Hole saw! Oh, uh, ah, they're ovals. See, if you use the hole saw, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> it takes two minutes to drill out the hole saw. I think I'll just carry on with this and see how we get on. <sighs> uh, yeah, so that's a drilled out now. Uh, and there's the tedious part. And again, if I had proper tools or a milling machine, I would do this the right way. However, I don't. So... I'm going to get a screwdriver and I'm going to chisel right the way around there but I'm not going to go all the way through because that'll just, it's a bit over the top uh, I'll go halfway through this side, flip it over and halfway through the other side and that'll uh, 
get these guys opened up. Ha! Pretty, pretty rough like. <laughs> but to be fair, it will work. And uh, that'll make me my flange roughly. I'll get the porting tool, port it all out nice and neat. Uh, and then see, see if it fits. Hey you guys. So what I've been doing now is... Uh, so I'll I mean shavings down there now. Basically, uh, I've been sort of trimming around these areas, just sort of getting it to a nice sort of shape. Uh, oh, what the fuck? It's petrol! How the hell's stuff? Ugh, oh, anyway. Uh, so, uh, just been sort of notching at these bits and I'm getting rid of them webbings. I'm keeping these webbings though, um, as they'll be good for sort of strength. Um, top half will do a little bit up there as well, them two. And I'll take off this big clump of metal here. And then I'll be able to see uh, how far off we are with our plate. Right guys, so I've managed to buff it all down. However, look at this big dirty hole here. <sighs> so that's going to have to be uh, repaired. Um, I'll be able to repair that with a TIG, it's not a problem. Uh, it'll be giving me a good chance to practice welding this sort of cast. But what I'll do is I'll clean up the edges, take all the sharp pieces off it. I'll probably just make a wee bit of plate, uh, a 3 mil thick stuff, and uh, I'll just sort of bosh it on around there, and then weld her up, uh, and that'll be that bit repaired. But that is a pain in the arse! Ha! <sighs> uh, you can't win all the time, though. So, but, yeah. You can see that's now sort of plated in place, so uh, what I'll do now is I'll massage it with a hammer for a while. <laughs> and We've got it sort of uh, playing them in place. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to get this pipe. This is three inch, forty five degree, fifteen pound from eBay. I'm going to mark up and I'm going to cut across here um, to get exactly what sort of shape I want. It's going to be half rough, roughly it, rough estimates, because it's just the way I work. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll tack that on. Once it's tacked on, I'll get another video. Right, so I've got the pipe cut down to size. Uh, now what I've started doing is cutting along here. Around the corner will be tricky to split this pipe in half. Right guys, I've cut this in half and tacked the two pieces together. And now I've measured up and that will fit nicely in there. We'll uh, take this off now and weld the plate to it and then we'll mark up uh, some plates for this. So what I've done now is uh, I've cut out these plates. It'll weld over the top and I'll be the sort of inlet marfles. Hooey! Some uh, tearing work. Oh fuck's sake, I need to turn this camera. Oh yeah! <laughs> right, so... What I've done so far is I uh, cut out pieces uh, and I've started uh, taking them on now so uh, you can see a couple of these splatters there but the majority of it looks uh, okay so um, yeah I'll carry on with that both sides I'm probably going to chop it a bit there uh, for a welder on um, the flange for the throttle body yeah, I'll keep it 76mm just in case I need to future proof it and put like a 
70mm throttle body on, but this the 65, the standard one, should do for now. Um, yeah, so we'll get into that uh, just shortly. Before we go any further, I just cut uh, another piece of aluminium out, uh, and I'll stick this here. Uh, just to double the thickness for when we drill and tap for the uh, vacuum lines, etc. Rightio, so uh, that's it all sort of welded up now. And the top pieces there, again, my dodgy welding, but it's uh, all homemade stuff. We like homemade stuff. But yeah, it looks uh, not bad. And if I get a uh, torch, see all four. Suckers. Uh, there, there. There's Greg again. Greg's come along. Uh, Keys a hand. <laughs> right, so uh, one of the problems we're going to have is uh, this is a uh, inlet here on the throttle body, and this is our air uh, control. So I could have the pipe coming off and then have another pipe coming off here and then, but I think the best thing we've what we've going to come up with is by blanking this off. And then actually drilling holes, see we've started there, through here. Um, and one way to get to that is by drilling holes right the way through, uh, along and then making a, a U here, and then I'll just weld this up, uh, which will let the um, let the car idle um, as it should, using the stock idle control valve. And you can see I've got a nice hole in there now. I've done that by drilling holes in the back end of it right the way through. Just sort of pouring it out, so that'll do for the idle control. This is real, real world stuff. Nobody uses rubber mallets. Sorted. Look at that. So, uh, yeah. So we'll have idle control, and uh, everything should work as it should off the stock body. Uh, I've got the map sensor here. I was considering putting it elsewhere, but. It'll be alright there, and uh, yeah, TPS etc. That'll be will be fine. So the next thing I have to work on is uh, well, exhaust manifold, and uh, turbo will be here on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, I was havering whether to take the turbo off this. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm going to do that to the lawnmower. Uh, I decided what I would do was I was going to go for the whole set HX4AW, which I would have done in four or five hours, alright. Um, but it had a big housing on it and I didn't like the rear housing. Uh, so for future proofing, I was like, oh, I'll stick with Garrett stuff, nice and simple. I went and seen uh, Cy SciTech Racing uh, and he had a, a spare a GT30. Uh, 76 but the hot side on it was wrong it was a 0.63 i think it was uh, and i need a 0.84 upwards so looking to get a turbine housing on its own was quite expensive so it turned out it was cheaper just to buy an ebay turbo with the housing i wanted the turbine housing and you know make one good turbo at the mall so uh, but i think actually what i'll do is i'll just stick the ebay turbo on mock everything up with it and uh, maybe run the car in with that but as it is, I'm buzzing. Stock fuel rail will work fine. Everything else, everything just will work. Hunky dory. One problem I'll have is I'll need to extend the wires for the TPS sensor and the map sensor. As standard, they're obviously fed from the other side of the engine. Right, guys, well, thanks for watching again, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video.